Greetings, today in my Focus RS I am installing the Grim Speed and Odyssey Extreme Lightweight Battery Setup. Here we are then, our brand new lightweight battery setup featuring two different products. So we have the Grim Speed Battery Mount, which is lightweight. It's made out of metal as opposed to plastic like the stock one, um, but it is super duper lightweight. Then we have the Odyssey Extreme ODS AGM 16L, also known as the PC680 battery. So this is obviously a lot smaller size wise, um, but it it is also a lot lighter than stock and that's obviously what we're going for as you may have worked out from the title of this video we are going for a lightweight battery setup now the reason why I decided to go for this is because um, well to be honest I hadn't really thought too much about it but then recently whenever I was doing the Powerflex poly trans mount upgrade that required the battery to be taken out and while I was doing that that really sort of hit home just how heavy the stock battery is I mean it's an absolute huge massive beast of a thing and so that really made me start thinking thinking lightweight battery could be a really good way to save a bit of weight and to increase performance. So in we come then with this setup. This setup, this combination of the Grim Speed mount and the Odyssey battery is a very like well-established combination. The Grim Speed battery mount is designed to work with um, a, a range of different batteries that fit this form factor, including the Odyssey Extreme, but there are other ones out there that you can get. But the Odyssey Extreme has a very good reputation for being an excellent battery. So this battery is specifically geared towards motorsport. And what Odyssey say is that it is designed to take constant pounding. Um, so it has a very rugged construction. So it has really tightly packed pure lead plates um, which protect it against shock and vibration which can quickly destroy regular batteries so you know if you're really going hard on track then it won't you know destroy itself then another advantage of the pure lead plates they have twice the power overall and three times the life of conventional batteries so what that means is this battery will last longer than the regular battery but also means that we get it in this smaller form factor and also we get lighter weight for the same kind of power as I'm holding the camera I can easily lift this up and down with one hand which I definitely could not be doing with the stock RS battery so that's pretty sweet and then um, as you can see it doesn't have the same terminals that our battery has but they do do this SAE terminal adapter kit so very simply um, these just will bolt in here and then we will be able to do a straight swap with the regular battery going back then to the Grim Speed mount um, obviously we need a new mount to have our lightweight battery and Grim Speed offers for this one now this is insanely light the top part here like this weighs absolutely nothing uh, which is really a remarkable achievement from grim speed it just looks really nice it feels really well made it's got this like really cool coating yeah it's just gonna fit the odyssey battery like perfectly so it's just gonna be a really nice combination of parts to lighten the load that we have in the front of the rs so without further ado let's start the installation before we even get to the card we can start the installation by doing a couple of things just right here as we are in the garage. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just double check um, what voltage we're getting from the battery currently. So I've got my multimeter here. So what Odyssey say is if you have 12.65 or above out of the box then you don't need to charge it before installation. So that's pretty much what we're looking for. So I will set my multimeter here to the 20 volts. And then... Don't know how well you can see that. And then literally we'll just 
So as you can see, we've got 12.76 coming from the factory, so we do not need to charge this up, so that is pretty handy. Next up, I am just going to get the terminals put on here, the SAE terminals. So these screw in, and the way they do that is up in the middle there, I don't know how easy it is for you to see, but there's like a little hex or Allen key bolt. Um, so we basically, I've just got it right here. I've got a hex socket, so this is H5, so five mil. So that just goes in there and then allows us to turn it. Um, so in terms of torque, we wanna to torque these to maybe about seven Newton meters or so, so not a lot of torque. And then also they do recommend that onto the very end of the threads, not all the way along because it's an insulator, some red thread locker, so you can use whatever type you want. This is from VTEC, or you can use Loctite 277 or 271, or just whatever you have, uh, whatever you like to use. So yeah, little drop of thread locker, on here and then tighten up to about seven or so Newton meters. So the positive terminal comes with this little plastic cap thing that we have to like rip off here. There we go. Okay, cool, so that is our terminals successfully installed. Very simple, very easy. So now the battery is 100% ready, so we can move on to the car and get the old one out. Okay, under the bonnet, the first step is to remove the intake. Um, I have covered this before, so I won't do it now. I'll just blast through and then come back to you, but it's just a process of disconnecting everything and removing it. All right, now that we have this lower section of the intake out, we can get onto the battery. So first thing is just getting this like cover off. So it pretty much just lifts up and then and sort of out. Very simple. There is then a rear one, which again, it's just sort of clipped in there with like some plastic clips. So popping it up and out. So I kind of like popped it up and then these bits at the side sort of out and then it comes up. Okay, next we're going to remove the negative terminal of the battery. So, I mean, it's probably easier to show you here with the positive. Um, it's literally just bolted in with a little 10 mil. So we need to get that on there and then just remove that bolt or loosen it rather. And then they just kind of wiggle off. I might as well actually just remove both of them right now. can be a little awkward to get this out because you're essentially trying to pull it upwards off of the terminal and obviously all this is in the way and we don't want to have to bother taking that off. So we just use a little pry bar. Yeah, so just getting that pushed up from below and then it comes right off. All right, exact same thing then for the positive. Much easier to get to because it's right in front of you. All right, next we're gonna remove these here two connections. So they're two different sizes. The first one is a 10 mil and then this one is a 13 mil. All right, now we can remove the battery tie down up here. So that's another couple of 10 mils. Now this like front plate of the battery tray, um, that is going to click out from the sides here. So we kind of have to like bring it up and then out. It's kind of easier maybe. Yeah, just one, once you pull it up, push the sides out. And then that comes away. And at this point we can get the battery out. So we just hold this and then we've got little handles here. Now this is pretty heavy and there's a little bit of a lip down here. So we do need to bring it up and out. So there we go, with the stock battery out, you can see the size difference is quite remarkable. <laughs> Put it right up close. Um, um, the Odyssey Extreme battery is tiny by comparison. And of course, the whole point of this being a lightweight, you know, this feels like very little compared to this big boy. So yeah, I mean, if you're interested in the weight difference between these, the difference is about 31 pounds, which is equivalent um, to about 14 kilograms. Um, so it's 
basically the equivalent of more than an entire wheel being removed from the car. Um, so it's quite a significant difference. All right, then continuing, we have inside the stock tray uh, three 10 mil bolts. So I'm gonna remove them so you can see the two that are there and then the one that's kind of sunken down in. So we'll get those out now. Now we can get our new Grimspeed battery tray in here and it bolts onto this existing stock plate. So there's three points, one, two, and then this like blank hole right here. Um, so being, you can sort of see how these two are sunken in um, to the stock plate. Um, so Grimspeed provide us with a couple of little spacers. Um, so they are just literally just set on there and then we can go and grab the fixings and the Grimspeed tray. Okay, this is, is the hardware that we get from Grimspeed and this of course is the tray. Um, so these three points for the main big bit of the tray, one, two and three, each of these points uses essentially a completely different piece of hardware um, which I guess kind of makes it easy to work out which is which. So for this one you can see it's countersunk so that requires this longer countersunk bolt. Then we have this one, like the sort of little pan head one. And so that goes here on the rear one and that requires the smallest washer that's in the pack. And then this one, which if you remember in the car, in the stock plate, it's just like a hole. For this, we have the larger hex head, also countersunk, but kind of stubby. And then we have this nylock nut, which is going to go underneath. So I'm gonna start off with these two because they just bolt right in and we can use that um, just to get this anchored. And then I will get this started and then once everything is started, I will tighten it all up. And if you want to, you can put a drop of Loctite Blue on the threads here. This one at the right, probably you don't really need to because it's a brand new nylock nut, but I'm gonna put a little drop of thread locker Blue on these two and then yeah, just get them in. All right then, so for this open one over the right hand side, um, this requires the same H5 hex from earlier. And then the nylock nut requires a 13 mil. So what I'm going to try and do, mm, it's a reasonably tight space, so I might go and grab a 13 mil spanner um, so that I can hold that underneath whilst I then from above um, use this to tighten that down. What I've got here is I've got a nut in this spanner right here Which I'm going to use kind of at an angle like this I'm gonna kind of like feed it in and then hold it underneath like that um, It's just a super tight space So, you know, you just got to do whatever you need to do to get that under there and to hold it Okay, then I can do a final tighten of these other two on the left hand side. They require a slightly smaller hex bit and they require a 4mm or H4. Should have mentioned before um, that it's with this right angled bit and the two like uprights that are pointing towards the front of the car but of course it can only really go in that way anyway now we have a little bit of prep to do on the top of the battery tray there's this like square area here which we are provided with this like sort of rubber stop thing kind of just to you know hold the battery nice and snug and to stop it from jiggling around so i've got an alcohol wipe just going to give the area a little bit of a clean up just in case there's anything on there from factory. I mean, there probably isn't. You can probably go straight ahead, but you know, I like to do a third job. Yeah, a little bit. So just have to wait for that to dry off and then we'll get that stuck on to here. Okay, nice. Um, so with that then, we are able to get this installed. Basically get this bolted to the rest of the Grimspeed tray. Um, so it's gonna be like up this way with the Grimspeed pointing upwards. So the first thing is these two rear ones. Um, now these all use the same hardware, so it's basically just the remaining hardware that we have. So we've got four little bolts and four little washers. So put a washer over the bolt, 
So the way that this works is the little bolts, they come through the holes on either side of the base mount and then they bolt into that little top bit. Now this one at the side is pretty close to the side of the fuse box, um, but Grimspeed have been nice enough and they have left like this cutaway right here. So what we can do is we can just sort of push that down into place like that before we even come out with the little top part of the tray and then what we need to do is we need to get a 10 mil spanner just in here so that we can tighten that up now the top part of the tray it goes like inside so let's go and get that now Okay, and then just with the thinnest spanner that you have, I guess, um, we're going to scooch this in the side and get the other side tightened up. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, cat? What you doing? You coming to check my work, make sure that I'm doing that right, yeah? <laughs> Did I tighten those bolts up enough? Well, oh, could even maybe don't go in there. <laughs> doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> hello <laughs> what do you see what do you see You like that? <laughs> okay, bye. Alright, there we go. That is both of those little bolts reasonably tight. Now we don't want to tighten them like super duper tight because they are meant to sort of act as kind of like a hinge. Um, but you know, get them nice and snug um, so that you know you can feel a bit of resistance whenever moving that. Um, so with that there, we can now go and grab the battery. So I'm just noticing in order to get the top of the Grim Speed over the Odyssey, it's not going to fit with the terminals on. So I'm going to have to take the terminals off, get this over the top, and then secure these back down. Not a big deal, but you know, it's a little bit of an oversight. Now, one thing to note is that the part with the sticker is pointing to the rear of the car. There we go, nice tight fit, but that's what we want. Um, so yeah, now we can get our terminals back on and then we've got two more little bolts and washers that go in either side. Looking good, so that's the battery secured in place, we have our terminals, we have everything nicely bolted up um, with regards to the battery tray anyway. Um, now, as you can see, there are little fixings here um, that allow us to reuse this plastic part, the front of the stock tray. Um, so we'll just like essentially sort of go sort of in and then down just to click that into place and then we'll be ready to start bolting all of our connections back up again and that will be that. Well, there we are. After a bit of uh, persuasion of the uh, smacking type, uh, it eventually popped in. It's very, very tight on there, um, but you know, a little bit of perseverance and it will eventually pop. Now we can connect these two things up here. So we've got the larger one and the smaller one. Okay, now we are ready for the battery positive. So 
just bring it around. And then tighten up our little 10 mil. And then the battery negative. So there we go, that is everything with regards to the battery connected up and looking good. You can see just how much extra space we have in here. And I mean, if that catch can, the CCV catch can was actually catching a bunch of oil, it would be much easier to empty now, but never mind. Uh, but yes, all that needs to be done now is to get the airbox back in place and all buttoned up, and then that will be installation complete. So there we go then, that is the Grimspeed and the Odyssey Extreme lightweight kit for the Focus RS all installed successfully. Installation wasn't too bad, a couple of little fiddly bits, but really not too much hassle. And yes, I just know from how light everything is, it's gonna make a real improvement. That is certainly what the consensus seems to be on this setup, that it makes a really worthwhile difference. So all I have to do is go out on the road and just see how much of a difference that it makes. So I will leave this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.